question. It says, at last year's Bogleheads conference, you predicted that over the next 10 years, stocks gross return would be 4%, bonds would be 2.6%. Your slide presentation, pages 49 to 52, which only Lady Geek could re remember. <laughs> <laughs> it's one year later, are you still on track? Well, no, I'm not on track, uh, let me be honest. I mean, I'm not sure what that means, one year into a 10-year forecast, uh, but it means that returns will be much lower than they have been. But I, I want to emphasize this. I have never thought or said that this uh, theory of uh, the sources of returns, stock returns come from dividend yields, stock returns come from earnings growth, and we add those two together, and that gives you investment return, and then stock returns get enhanced or reduced by valuation changes. If the PE goes from 20 to 30, you get another 7% a year. If it goes from 20 to 10, you lose a 7% a year over the next decade. And uh, those things are not really predictable. Uh, so we, we rely on history. I do. I think it's 10 years for one and 30 years for the, uh, for the PE. And uh, so when I say, as I do this year, 4% and 3%, before costs are deducted, um, I say, if you don't like my prediction, make your own. Uh, and just think about how easy that is. Uh, the dividend yield is 2%. You can't change that, and I can't change that. The earnings growth, I'm using 4, and you can say it's going to be 8. I don't think you're going to be right, but you're entitled to say that. So all of a sudden, you're in, at 10, 8 and 2. And you say, I think the valuations are going to go from 25 times earnings to 30, and that's going to take the 10 to, let's say, 12. Just don't give me the 12 without telling me the components. There's a discipline here. When someone says, I think the market's going to do 10% a year, just tell me, please, where it comes from. And uh, right now, we are, uh, my predictions are not looking very good. Uh, not predictions, really, but reasonable expectations. And uh, you know, I'd, I'd much rather... I guess just constitutionally, uh, be on the low side than the high side, but the math is the math. Now, I could have said I expect more earnings growth, and I probably would probably have been wise to have put 7% um, earnings growth instead of 6 I'm sorry, 6% instead, instead of 4 or 5%, but we'll see. There's a lot of time to go, and happily with this 10-year forecast, I won't be around to know whether it's right or wrong or not. <laughs> Well, we hope you are, Jack. <laughs> Not Thank too much. Uh, this first one is from an attendee named Fred Beery. It says, the market has been up for years, and I have gained more than I expected. In setting up a donor advisor fund for charitable giving over the next, say, 10 years, what allocation would you suggest between U.S. equities, bonds, dare I ask international, <laughs> to maximize the returns for the charities I give to? Well, first of all, if you're going to have a balanced program, uh, which is what you laid out there, uh, you're not going to maximize your return. The best way to maximize your return is to, in the long run, maybe not from here, is to buy the S&P 500 and leverage it. Uh, and you don't want to do that. But the prudent thing, so the, the real question is not to get maximum returns, but what is the best way to get prudent returns? And I, you know, I, I would stick with the balanced index fund formula of 60% uh, stocks and 40% bonds. And maybe for a program like this, 65%. But you really can't make an argument over 65 or 60 because nobody knows and God knows Bogle doesn't know. Uh, so uh, should international non-US be in that 60%? I don't think you need it. And I don't think the rest of the world will do as well as the US. But I'm wrong so often in my new book. I spend more time talking about the things I did wrong than the things I did right. So it's a matter of judgment. And uh, I'd say maybe to, to honor the principle, uh, let's call it Taylor's principle, the free fund portfolio, you might have 10% to 20% of the stock position, no more than that, in non-U.S. stocks. As a retiree in mid-retirement, Given your lower projections for stock market returns over the next 10 years, should I reduce, reduce my stock exposure in my portfolio since CD rates are rising and becoming more attractive? And how can I determine the appropriate stock allocation? 
Well, you know, I've said before, this is a really hard time to invest. I would say, as a general principle, with the stock market at these levels, it is probably a good idea to, as, the, as Baron Rothschild said, to sell to the sleeping point, to sell stocks where you're not worried about it. Maybe a 10% re percentage point reduction in the stock position. Maybe not. What makes this time so different is that bond yields are so low, and they're going up, admittedly. The Treasury is up to, I think someone said, 3.2%, 25-year Treasury, 30-year Treasury, and uh, the stock market is one8 so you get a higher yield. But these are not really super yields. And uh, so uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a really not a question, that, an easy question to answer because it depends not only on your ability to withstand a market decline, uh, your financial ability, but on your emotional ability to stand a market decline. So you're, you're asking me to do not only a financial analyst, analysis, but a psychological analysis, which I'm not prepared to do on the, in, in, on the, on the information contained in one or two sentences. But I would say... There is, you, the biggest mistake investors make is when they think the market is high, they get out, they go to zero. That is the dumbest thing you can possibly do because there's no certainty in this. So in my book, which I think you know, so I've signed so many, I don't feel, um, feel badly about blacking it a little bit, a um, little book of common sense investing, and I say never have less than 25% of it in equities and never more. Now there are exceptions to both of those. But I would kind of stick to that. Just make sure you've got a decent position. And I would think today would probably be a time to make a very, if, if, if this is the way the investor feels, if this makes you more comfortable, makes you sleep better, to do some kind of a 5 or 10 percentage point reduction. So if he's at 65%, to go to 60 or 65, of 60 or 55, excuse me. Uh, and uh, but there's no, I, I don't know how to get across. People ask me these kinds of questions all the time. There's no certainty about this. Uh, you know, you could be so terribly wrong uh, that you don't want to do anything too big. But in general, I'd say if you're at 60 40, uh, and, and I'm, I'm, I happen to be 50 50 myself, I told you that yesterday, and I spent half my time wondering why I have so much in stocks, and the other half wondering why I have so little. Uh, the investor's dilemma, I think I call it. Uh, but it's, it's, it gets to, presumably, the financial ability to withstand risk is there, and the emotional ability there. You have to, add, the investor has to ask for himself. But if you're really bothered, really scared, do something. I mean, life is too short. Uh, but are there precise answers to the question? No, there aren't precise answers to anything in the field of investing.